Hey guys, it's so great to see you again this Sunday at Living Waters Online. It is going to be an epic day as we kick off our vision for 2022. And you guys are going to be hearing a ton about the vision that we have here at Living Waters. Before we get to worship today, make sure you check out last week's amazing kickoff 2022. If you didn't see it, it is powerful as we look back at 2021 and what God had done all through the year in 2021. And here we are in Ontario and we're in a lockdown again. We're still in a lockdown and uh, speaking to you guys from across Canada. I just want to say uh, to all you guys who sent in your videos uh, last week and all your amazing comments, we just want to thank you so much because we know that God has done so much in 2021 and we are expecting greater things in 2022 because he said he wants to do even greater things through us in the time that we're living in. And I love this word vision, and I'm gonna be focusing on this word vision as we move into 2022, because the word of God tells us without a vision, the people perish. And what that means is if you don't have a vision, if you don't have something to look at or look forward to that God puts in your heart, then it basically says you have nowhere to go. And I love this because God is always speaking to us. He's speaking loud and clear. And as we go into 2022, I love this word. And I'm just gonna read you the definition because it's so powerful. And vision means this. It means the ability to think about or plan the future with imagination or wisdom. And that is the thing that we're praying for this year is like, God, you give us the strategy, you give us the wisdom, but God has given us an amazing plan for 2022. So stay tuned, you guys. It's gonna be an epic Sunday for you. Good afternoon, welcome to church. We're so glad that you came to join us today at Living Waters. We're gonna take some time, we're gonna worship the Lord, we're gonna cast off the cares of the days and just give God the glory he deserves. If you're excited about that, put a hand clap in the chat and let's uh, just sing together today, come on. Show me forever, you and I together. There's nothing that could take this love away. From the ashes, you're calling me a treasure. There's nothing I can get in, in between. From the cross to the grave, to the stone you rolled away, all the price that you paid, a love story rose again and proclaimed that you would never leave me. Spirit came with the flame. Can't be broken Every word you spoken Unfailingly Come on now Cause every time I call on you You've always got the time for me now You sent me forever You will be From the cross To the grave To the stone you rolled away Or the price That you paid A love story
is not beside you Open up my eyes in wonder And show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love To those around me And only there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes Proverbs 29:18, and I refer to that scripture uh, in the intro, but I love this so powerfully. Proverbs 29:18 says this, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But it also says where there is vision and where we stay in line with what God is saying to us, that he will be happy. How many people want to be happy in 2022? I know there's not a lot of happiness right now and what we're going through, but you know, God is faithful. He's so faithful. And as we go into offering today, I just want to uh, give you some amazing vision. And I will be speaking to you about vision and so will Pastor Sid as we move into 2022 and the plans that God has in store. And it is awesome, you guys. We're so excited. But uh, I love this because this word is actually a word for the new year. And I love this so much, but it's Habakkuk. Two, three, and this is such a powerful scripture. And I, I'm going to take this as my scripture for the year because I love this so much, and I do this uh, with my life. And I, I that's why uh, God is so powerful when when you are living for Christ and He gives you vision. It's a vision that goes beyond yourself. It's beyond you know what you can do as a person. It's what God wants to do through you. That's the vision that God is talking about right now. And I love this in Habakkuk 2, 3, it makes it very clear and it says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Ooh, I love that. And it says, though it may take time, it says wait for it. I absolutely love that scripture so much because so many times God will speak to us and say, you know, move in this direction, do what I'm calling you to do. And I really want you to focus in on what I'm saying so that you can go the next level. And we talked about that last week, that God is calling us to a next level. As a church, uh, as an outreach to this city, we want to go next level. And Pastor Sid talked a lot about us coming together in unity to see the vision go forward in power. And that is a key word for 2022, vision and unity. And we will see great things as we move forward. Also, I love this scripture so powerfully. Uh, verse two in that same uh, book, Habakkuk, it says this, it says, for, for God answered me and he said this, he said, write the vision down, make a plan, write it down. And whoever sees it is gonna be able to pick it up and run with it. That is such an amazing scripture. I love it so much. And I feel like God is really speaking that to us as a church in 2022, that this vision that you are going to see, it's gonna to come to pass. Pastor Sid talked about the building. I've been talking about the building campaign and what we're gonna be kicking off for the new year in 2022. You're gonna hear a lot about that. Guys, this is our year and we are so excited. And you know what? Yes, it has been hard. We're not lying. It's been difficult. The last two years have put some pushback. It's like backwards, forward, backwards, forward. And I know everybody can relate to this in our personal lives, in our professional lives, in you know the vision that God has given us. 
uh, to move forward. We want to see this year as we go into offer, we talked about this last year. Uh, I had James here with me hosting and that was epic and awesome. And uh, thank you, James. Uh, you're going to see a lot more of James this season also hosting with me. But you know, God spoke to us loud and clear. He said, pump it up next level. We know that the needs are great in crisis. And especially now, needs are even greater. And what better for us as a church because we care about people. And when there's needs, we wanna be able to meet the needs in our city, in our province, and our nation. And that's what God has called us to do, to meet the needs of the hungry, to meet the needs for families, to meet the needs for youth in our city, for seniors in our city, so many ministries for kids in our city. Uh, this year, we are gonna pump it up to the next level. And we thank you guys for joining with us so we can see uh, the evidence of what God is doing through us in 2022 this year. We are so excited. So as you give an offering today, uh, really go before God today and say, God, um, what do you want me to give this year? And I'm challenging you guys to continue to tithe, continue to give, because the evidence of your giving is huge in the lives of other people. And as we move forward in the building and the plans for the building, we are going to see the most epic building and you guys are going to be a part of that and also our care in the city has to get to next level we want to give to more people we want to be there for the homeless we want to be there for the families in need the singles in need this this year is very important as a church and i thank you guys all of our volunteers and everybody on board on this team that is going to move this forward but god is going to use us so powerfully this season so make sure when you're giving today that you're really faithful to god because he's going to take this and he's going to multiply it not only in your own life but he's going to multiply it over the church and the ministry and we are going to see things that we never saw before and that is exciting you guys and so thank you guys if you haven't given before uh, there's a link here in the description also you can give through the tidely app you can text to give and we thank you guys for sending in your e-transfers well praise god so good to be with you you know i'm so excited you know uh, the message from last week you know it really pumped me and i am i'm so excited and i want you to be excited along with us because you know we're we're trying to cast the vision of how we're ramping up you know our transition that this year is going to be far far greater you know in terms of you know progressing towards a building and we've got some things planned and I'm excited about it and you know as we talked about the transition you know and uh, you know as we continue in transition always you know we're learning how to deal with obstacles amen we're learning how to deal with difficulties we're learning how to press through and you know we got to stay focused on that and that's going to be a focus this year you know in my message is how we continue to stay focused stay strong move through the mountains amen and there's such great illustrations you know in the word of god and so if you got your bible you know just turn to exodus in chapter 14 and verse 10 to 15 it says and when pharaoh drew near the children of israel lifted their eyes and behold the egyptians marched after them so they were very afraid and the children of israel cried out to the lord and they said to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. Man, now that's the voice of our God, amen, who calls himself man of war. And so the word of the Lord to you today is go forward, <laughs> regardless of your mountain. To look back is to quit. To quit is to lose the victory. Yes, our God is a God who fights for us. And while he fights, we hold our peace, folks. Everyone at one time or another has a mountain to face and needs our Father's mighty right hand to lead us 
in the battle, praise God. But you will never realize victory and peace, folks, if you, like the Israelites, you become fearful, lose trust in God, and neither can you just sit around and expect God to do it all himself. He can, but you can cry out to him from now until Jesus comes back again and his response will still be the same. Go forward and face the mountain, knowing that the battle is mine. That's our God. And I can cry out to God on your behalf as Moses did for the Israelites and I will get the same response, folks. Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of living waters to go forward and walk in peace, knowing that I am fighting for them. So in our battles, we thank the Lord that in our weaknesses, he is strong, folks, and he is all the power we need. God doesn't need your ability, but your availability. To walk in victory does not depend on your strength, your talent, ability, or education, folks. When your mountain gets bigger than you, that's when you enter into God's miracle-working territory. Wow! Now you're cooperating with God and you can expect a mighty miracle. Remember, if you're equal to the battle, then you don't need the power of God. However, when the mountain gets bigger than you, God looks down and sees the mountain and says, yes, there's an opportunity for me and my power to conquer. And so when we embrace the truth of God's word and unleash the power that really lives in us, then yes, we'll go forward armed, radical, ready to experience the peace that passes all understanding. Look at Mark 11, 23, 24. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things that he says, then it will be done. He will have whatever he says. Man, I love verse 23. Be removed means that you face the mountain as if you own it and not fear it. And owning it means to crush it. The word declares it means to pulverize it to even dust. And then cast it is to blow it into oblivion. Now we're walking like warriors and not weaklings. Amen. Praise God. You know, there, there's an illustration I, I always think of in times like this of a couple who, you know, came to Christ and suddenly started getting right, things right in their lives and started to, you know, pay back taxes and things and suddenly found themselves in a de desperate situation where they needed a certain number of thousands of dollars and had no resources in which they could find that money or borrow that money. They, were, they had done everything in trying to get their house in order. And suddenly they got a phone call <laughs> You know, someone wanted to come and see them, talk to them. As someone they had met, but didn't really know that well. And so, yes, they invited over and they had supper together. Then the couple asked them, do you have a debt that you cannot pay? And the couple were astounded. They looked at each other and said, like, whoa, because they don't tell anybody their business, right? And they said, actually, yes, we do. And he said, <clears throat> tell me the amount. And the couple knew the amount, right? Whatever thousands of dollars. He told them. And the, the husband pulled out of his jacket pocket a certified check in the exact amount of what they owed. Folks, <laughs> you know, that's the power of God. That's when we begin to trust God because this young couple who had come to the Christ, you know, wanted to do everything. They wanted more of God. They wanted to really do everything God had for them. They, and they were doing everything and came to this mountain that they saw impossible. They had nowhere to turn and nobody to turn to. And this happened, this couple. God had spoken to them. Folks, that's miracle. That's miracle power. That's still present to us today when we trust and we don't let our mountain overwhelm us and overcome us to the point where we cannot continue. Can you say amen to that? Wow, that's amazing. And now follow this closely, folks. The battle will always require more trust than your strength allows.
Don't quit halfway through the battle. God is faithful and will never stop fighting for you. Remember, he will not give you more than you can handle. Wow. And if you're equal to the task, then you don't need God. Amen? So you don't get more strength for the battle. You get more strength in the battle. For example, you don't get strength from God for praying. No, you become stronger as you pray. And just as you don't receive strength for witnessing by talking about it, you get stronger as a witness for Christ by witnessing, by sharing your testimony. A church, for example, does not become a kingdom builder because they have special events and great facilities and awesome charisma and super programs and worship, and that's all great. But a church becomes a kingdom builder when it has burdens that it cannot bear on its own, burdens for revival and the fire of God to burn in a city, burden for the river of life to flow through our lives out to others, burdens for the lost, burdens for the hungry, the poor, the thirsty, the abused, the broken, the sick, the prisoner, the captive, burdens for this generation and the mental anguish and agony they live in. You know, when we have burdens that we cannot bear and weights we cannot lift, we don't quit, we don't give up, we don't get discouraged. We recognize that that's when the Lord reaches down and says, I'm going to help you bear your burdens because your task is bigger than you. And you have left me some miracle territory in which I can demonstrate my power and show my glory. Step into the water, face the mountain. Most people think that mountains are hindrances to miracles happening in their law is actually just the opposite is true. You cannot qualify for a miracle until you have a mountain. <laughs> the Israelites would have never reached the promised land if they hadn't stepped into the water. And no sooner did they enter the promised land, they faced another major battle, Jericho. <laughs> But the walls of Jericho would only qualify them for another miracle. Folks, there's always a mountain out in front of us when we take on the tasks set before us. Always opposition. There'll always be a Jordan River. There'll always be a Jericho wall, a Goliath, a demonic opposition to what God has for us. And many have come to the edge of the river and said nothing is happening. The water isn't parting. I don't see God moving. So they back off and camp by the side of the river. They stand around studying the problem, but do nothing. It's only when we go into the river, step into the water, marching forcibly and keeping our peace that the waters part and the miracle is seen. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego would not have seen the fourth man in the fire had they not entered into the furnace. David would never have seen Goliath fall if he had not entered into the battle. Jesus never would have experienced the resurrection if he had not gone to the cross, folks. How do you qualify for a miracle? Yeah, step into the problem. Face the difficulty and confront your enemies. It's the first condition established by God for a miracle. And then watch the power of God at work in your life. I close with 2 Corinthians 13, chapter 4. For though he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God. Yes, when God is with us, then who can be against us? Who can defeat us? So hold fast, hold on to your peace. Praise God. Stay tuned, I'll be right back. Holy Spirit, burn like a fire, consume me, consume me, here in your praises, Lord, I surrender to your
Praise God, folks. You know, I'm really ex pumped. You know, I know that these miracles are for you and they're for today. They're not just, you know, people say, oh, well, that's what happened back in, you know, th those days. No, this is a, a now a message. Uh, God wants to bless you today as just as he's blessed his children down through, you know, the decades and, the, you know, and, and that's you, his child. And I know it's a process. I know as we're getting closer and more intimate and a deeper relationship with God, then we begin to even trust more. Uh, but folks, you've got to be a person who really reads your word to find out, you know, who God is and who God is in your life and who you are in Christ. And so I encourage you out there, those of you that are saved, know God, you know, studying, reading your word, I know right now, you know, a lot of people don't have, you know, Bibles, they, they have apps. There's nothing like s sitting with your, a, a Bible and opening it up and opening the pages up and suddenly, you know, reading the stories of the power of God. And it's not just for then, but reading them as if they are for you today. Uh, read the book of Ephesians who you are in Christ. It's powerful and you know, and then when you're reading the word and it's not happening to you, then the word stirs up the life of God that lives within you. I wanna know more about that. I wanna know how to get there. And if that's you today, then ask the Lord to forgive you for you know, letting the flame of the fire of God in you dwindle and fan that flame. And there's no greater way to fan the flame that's in you as a believer than reading the Word of God, taking the pages, opening them up, you know, and just knowing how great your God is. And if you're watching and have been watching and you haven't yet, you know, come into that personal relationship with the Almighty God through the Lord Jesus Christ, then I would suggest to you, today's your day. Today's your day to come to that place in your life and say, I want it. I really want it. And ask God to forgive you of your sin. The sin of maybe, you know, having things your own way, you know, doing things your own way. You know, but now you come to realize you're powerless over certain things and what you're hearing about the power of God when he works with you. He doesn't just sit around and do it for you. He works with you as you believe in him and trust in him, but you can't trust in God if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal savior as a result of what he did at the cross of Calvary. And so I would say to you, you know, ask Jesus to forgive you. And if you say this prayer, you know, sincerely and with that deep desire, you know, Lord Jesus, forgive me for the way I've lived my life. But I want, I want that relationship with Almighty God that empowers me to do those things I know I'm helpless over. And then please come into my life. And I want you to be Savior and Lord of my life. And I pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Folks, if you've said that, then watch what begins to happen. But the key is staying connected, hanging around with those who have that same belief system, that same energy that goes on and on and gets greater and mightier. You know, find those that really love God and have that power working in their lives and talk to them, you know, over social media, Facebook, whatever means you know, and get connected, get yourself a Bible, or, you know, day to day, you know, just for encouragement, you have your apps, your Bible apps that you can refer to, but there's nothing like, and God says this is nothing like getting close and intimate and spending time that's focused totally on Him by opening the pages of His Word and browsing through and starting to read things, and God begins to speak to you through that. So praise God, get out there, get a Bible, stay connected, 
God loves you so much. We love you. Can't wait to be with you in person. And that's coming soon, folks. Praise God. COVID cannot put us down. Amen. COVID cannot defeat us. We're marching forward. You know, we're warriors, not wimps. Amen. God bless you. Love you so much. See you next Sunday. Oh, wow, what amazing, amazing service. Uh, and it's so great to have you guys at church. I absolutely love church. Church is awesome. And I really hope that you guys love church because you get encouraged, you get inspired every Sunday when we come together. Make sure you drop a comment in the chat, you guys. Love to say hi. Let us know how you're doing also. If you need prayer, uh, make sure you email us. Uh, you can do that through our website. Also drop a comment here if you need prayer. We wanna agree with you guys. Come on, we are praying and believing for breakthrough in 2022 come on because God is saying he's got something for you in 2022 and that is reality and it's what he has called you to do and so tap into that today make sure you share this broadcast make sure you follow us on our Instagram Facebook and Twitter also subscribe to our YouTube uh, you guys you can go back and watch amazing messages in the week maybe when you need a boost but also I heard God say this week make sure uh, to worship me you know in through the trials through the crisis through the hard times God is there he will never leave you he will never forsake you people might forsake you people might let you down but you know what that's because people aren't God and God is God and he's the only one that will never let you down. Have a great week, everybody. We will see you next Sunday. And make sure to remember this. God has called you for a purpose. He has a plan. He has a destiny for you. And you are worth so much. You are so valuable. And your purpose is going to affect thousands and thousands of people. You don't even know it, but God does. Stay the course, everybody. We will see you next Sunday at LW Online.